This is one mean old battery charger from the 1950s. In fact, in order for this battery charger to work, it has to glow inside. It has a big bulb inside of it that glows very bright when it's charging a battery. These cannot be left unattended because, well, they have the tendency to boil them and destroy them. In this video, I'm going to bring this battery charger back to life and charge a battery with it. Let's get started. This battery charger really has stood the test of time. This has been charging batteries since the 1950s and was just recently taken out of service. No kidding, this thing has been charging batteries for over 70 years and was recently taken off the wall. Chances are the fix is going to be very simple. This thing has a bulb inside it that's much like a light bulb. And that light bulb takes the alternating current that this charger makes and changes it into direct current so that this thing will charge batteries. That bulb inside is much like an old incandescent filament style light bulb. Imagine a light bulb glowing from the 50s until just recently and just recently failing under hard service as well. That light bulb just isn't glowing. It's actually you know, doing a job. It's a rectifier tube. That filament is dealing with some pretty tough situations in there. I wouldn't even be surprised if it's the original tongue R bulb inside this thing. We'll take a look in a moment. And I have a bunch of tongue R bulbs. I haven't even plugged this in yet. So we're going to find all of this out together. But I can almost guarantee that that's most likely going to be the problem. These things are almost indestructible. Again, high quality product from the 50s. Imagine a battery charger built now, lasting 70 years. Will anything nowadays last 70 years? 10 years even? High quality product. They're still around too, I believe. So, you know, good company, making great products. This is what the back looks like. It has a hinge so you can open the top up so you can get right inside to service this thing immediately. They did come with screws to hold the top down, but they were always taken out. What ends up happening is these things, they buzz in service and the actual tongue R bulb, because it's buzzing, sometimes backs off in the socket. So you have to tighten it back up. You have to retighten the bulb every now and then. The chances are that's the reason those screws are missing. Great charger to have. If you find one of these things, fantastic charger to own. They have the ability to bring batteries back from the dead like no other. This thing is designed to charge, I'll zoom on into this, one to six, six volt batteries all at the same time. So this will charge six, six volt batteries all at once or three 12 volt batteries all at once. And of course that would be the batteries attached in series. Now, battery chargers like this should never be unattended. If you're going to ever try to charge anything with a battery charger like this, you should always be around the thing because, well, these things are pretty mean. And of course, left unattended, have the ability to boil batteries. And, and you look at the clips here, they do look like they've, you know, seen their fair share of battery acid. I wouldn't doubt that this thing is definitely given a fun time to a whole bunch of batteries. So again, you know, like, I mean, these things are fantastic for bringing batteries that are pretty, pretty uh, long gone or far gone. And it just, it manages to bring them back and you can use them for a period of time again. Ask me how I know this. So anyways, what I'll do is I'll get this thing ready to plug in. We'll see what's going on with this thing and resurrect it. I'll grab a battery and let's try and charge a battery with it. The battery charger is plugged into my isolation transformer and current limited variac supply. That little bulb indicates that that unit is on. So all I have to do is turn this and that'll give us an indication if the transformer in here is okay. What will give us that indication? Well, those two fancy looking light bulbs right at the top there. I'll zoom on in. What I'll do is I will turn the battery charger on if those two bulbs get brighter, we know that the primary is okay. And it is, what a surprise. So I'll move it through all of the settings. No problems. They're not overly bright. They are very bright, but they're not overly bright, indicating that the primary is not shorted. 
So that is a good sign. So what I just did was turn this through all of the different settings. Now there is no voltmeter on this. You just have a current meter and that's absolutely all. That's all it takes to use this battery charger. Now the open circuit voltage for this battery charger is most likely going to be relatively high because this will charge three 12 volt batteries in series. So it's going to be beyond 36 volts, obviously somewhere. And of course, when you turn this, what it does is it's basically supplying more current to the load, which is the battery. Now, when I turn this like this, the bulb inside should light up. And we look inside, we can see the bulb here somewhat and there is no glow. That would be very bright right now if that was working. So the next step is to open the top and find out why that bulb is not glowing. All right, the thing is disconnected from the AC source, obviously. There's no screws in the side here, so this is usually how they open. It doesn't look like that's too sturdy. I'll have to be spot welded back on or maybe a new hinge put on. There's the bulb. And this should be glowing very brightly. Look at all this old wiring, beautiful 1950s wiring, power transformer and all sorts of great stuff inside here. Multi-turn switch down in the bottom. See that right down in the bottom there. Still solid too. Like everything is so solid. The one that I did earlier on that one from the 30s or even earlier, I have a bunch of these things. Uh, the switch on that one is well worn out. This one here still has a lot of life left in it still. So the bulb itself, let's see if it's loose. That's actually pretty tight in there. So I'll turn the isolation transformer back on here. See if that helped at all. Uh, you see how this is loose in here? See how that's loose? That's from people probably tightening this thing up all the time, right? Because they have a tendency to rattle or buzz loose in the socket, so they're continually tightened. Of course, the proper way to do that is, you know, with the power disconnected, is to grab the base and wedge it tight like this, not grab the actual bulb, because a lot of the times what happens is the bulb is actually still good, but the wires from the bulb get twisted off from you know, people trying to tighten this up over and over over the years. This does look like the original bulb. So I'll just shut this off. So chances are that bulb is done. So I'll move this plate cap out of the way. Nice big stove fuse on there to protect your battery. Maybe. So Oh, that big base on that thing. Isn't that a beautiful looking device? It definitely has a lot of time on it. As the bulbs age, the filament gets a curve in it or a little bit of a notch in there. So when they're new, they don't look like that. They're pretty much straight across or a very slight bow to them. This one here definitely has a lot of time on it. So I would think that this is probably the original bulb. So... Yeah, you see that? This is one of the lead-in wires to the actual bulb itself. It's probably broken off in there. This may even be able to be resurrected. So desolder this, take the base off, and possibly resurrect this bulb. So I'll go get a meter, and we'll see if there is any continuity here. And from then, we'll move on. I have a feeling I'll just replace that bulb. Battery charger makes a great holder for my meter. Meter's on continuity. So let's see if there's any filament continuity in this bulb. Nothing whatsoever. So one of two things, either the filament is open or that wire is busted off from the bulb under this base here. Possible resurrection video in the future. I'll go grab another bulb and put it in here and let's see what happens. Here's a nice shiny tongue R bulb to try out. Nice and reflective. This is often disconnected from the AC supply, by the way. 
Now here's a comment that I often get in the comment section here on YouTube. They say, Paul, you can't touch the glass of a vacuum tube. It's going to hurt the glass. Well, as long as the vacuum tube is cold and it's out of circuit, touching the glass of a vacuum tube isn't going to hurt the glass at all. It's a standard glass tube. And that's the same with a 6V6, 6L6, 12AX7, all of the vacuum tubes that are in guitar amplifiers and audio amplifiers and TVs and radios and all of that stuff. The glass is just a soft glass type vacuum tube. And as long as the tube is cold and out of circuit, it's completely fine to touch that glass. There are hard glass vacuum tubes, and even those are fine to touch the glass on. Hard, an example of a hard glass vacuum tube would be like a, a 4-1000 or a 3500Z or you know, a 4 or 400, something like that. That's a hard glass tube. And those are usually made out of Pyrex. So the glass on them is Pyrex. Uh, some have Nonex, some of the uh, really special specialized tubes have non-X glass, and that would be like a Bendix hard glass tube. Those tubes aren't very common. Uh, they were often used in uh, rockets and things like that way back when. I have some of those vacuum tubes. I'll show some of those in the future here and maybe even light one of them up for all of you. So there you go. If you hear that, it's completely false and you can tell them that they are just, I guess, repeating a fairy tale or uh, parroting a fairy tale. So. The glass on a vacuum tube is fine. The only downfall to it I could say is if you have a new old stock vacuum tube, like a, say an expensive Amperex a Bugle Boy type vacuum tube with a little symbol on it, the numbering and lettering system often has turned to powder by now on those new old stock tubes. So if you run your finger across it, sometimes you can wipe the numbering and lettering system off. And of course, there's some artwork on them, like there's the little Bugle Boy holding up the bugle. Uh, you know, if you want to preserve that, anything will take that off. So soap and water, just plain old water will take that off. So if you're cleaning a tube, you want to use a Q-tip and go around that actual symbol in the numbering system so that, you know, you don't, you know, destroy that. But that's about it. That's just, you know, the paint or the, the actual uh, numbering system that they've used back in the day. So a lot of the times, now what I'm doing is I'm screwing this in by the base and I'm just supporting the bulb here. I'm not using this at all. I'm not twisting the bulb at all. Again, you don't want to do that. So tightening in it is done by the base. And a lot of the times that's why they leave this base here so you can do that. So if you tighten it by the bulb, you're going to bust the actual bulb and twist it out of the base. So always keep that in mind. So uh, a lot of the times the numbering system is etched into the uh, more expensive uh, especially tubes that were, you know, JAN type tubes. So JAN stands for Joint Army and Navy. A lot of the times the numbering system is etched in and sometimes they'll even use a printing system as well. But uh, a lot of the times it's just etched right into the glass. So there's some vacuum tube knowledge for you. Okay, so I'll switch the isolation transformer and current limited variac supply on. So this is now energized. So what do you think is going to happen? Turn this here so you can see. Here we go. Look at that. It's probably be good for another 70 years now. As I said, maybe even 140. So now it's going to be seeing intermittent service, probably much more intermittent than it was before. So uh, yeah, this will probably be good for the long run. Look at that. So now what I'll do is I'll get a filter capacitor because the DC here is unfiltered on this, and of course that's going to confuse the meter a little bit. So I'll put a capacitor across this, and let's actually measure the voltage and see what this thing is putting out open circuit. Battery clips are attached to a filter capacitor, just enough to filter off the ripple so that I can get a nice clean reading. The capacitor is really overrated, by the way, too. So what I'll do is I'll turn it right to the max. So how many volts do you think we are going to see across this capacitor here. Now, again, this is open circuit. So if this was put across an actual battery, of course, it would load that down. And of course, we would get a current reading, right? Anyways, let's take a look. 62. So no load, 62 DC volts, nice and filtered right here. Keep that in mind if you ever get one of these battery chargers. You definitely want to make sure it's off 
before you go about handling these clips, right? So I imagine the open circuit voltage could be higher for larger units as well. It may even be higher for this one. There might be dirty connections and everything in here. Again, this hasn't been cleaned or restored. And I'm going to end up restoring this battery charger on this channel as well. So in the future, you will look forward to seeing that. And then I have another one, a very neat one that's even much earlier than this one that I'm going to restore. And I'll take you through the entire uh, chassis painting and all that process as well. Baking the paint in an oven should be a lot of fun. Now, since there's nothing to drain that cap off, I imagine it still has a charge on it. So let's uh, take a closer look at the uh, little LEDs on this box here. I don't know if I can zoom you in good enough to actually see that. So, so keep an eye on these two little LEDs right here. You'll see one of them light up. Of course, there's nothing to drain this off, right? So here we go. See that one light up? So this is a little safe capacitor discharge box that I've designed. It's another project that I've built and released in my electronics course. Handy tool to have around. So now that that's discharged and this is off, I can comfortably remove that. I'll go get a battery and let's see if it'll charge a battery. The charger is attached to the battery and I'll turn it on here and put a charge into the battery. So first setting is six volts. So nothing happens, no current. Second setting is still for six volts. The third is the first for 12 volt batteries here. Can you hear that growling away? Doesn't that sound mean? Now for this size of battery, I don't know if I'd want to go much higher than that because it's going to put a charge into there very quick. I'll quickly go to the next setting. You hear that just growling away there. So I'll let this run for a little bit and I'll take a voltage reading here. I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, it's been running for a while here. Turn that off and let's see. Now that 13.5, not bad for a 12 volt battery. So it's brought it right up there. Now, of course, this will probably settle off. The battery's a 12 volt battery, right? So it'll probably settle off about 12.6, something like that. But it's putting a charge into it and mighty fast as well. So great little charger, project successful. Very happy with the results of this. I'm looking forward to doing the restoration and taking all of you along on that journey with me as well. Definitely stay tuned. I've got a lot of great videos coming in the very near future displaying both modern and antique technology alike and possibly some technology you've never seen before. So don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and a very effective way, I have an ongoing electronics course where I also share many of my personal electronic inventions. You're definitely going to want to check that out as well. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on that link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.